Ed Corrigan once again, and uh, welcome to our show. Ed. My pleasure to be here, Jorge. Okay, last time we left you uh, uh, talking regarding all what it was, the sponsorship for uh, SPOS, and we said that we were going to talk about all the changes on immigration in the Canadian law. So which are the changes that we have right now? Well, the government has uh, brought in some changes where uh, they've done away with the conditional sponsorship before you had to, the marriage had to last for two years, and once they pass that condition, then the person become a, a permanent resident. But uh, they've withdrawn that because there was concerns expressed that some people would be stuck in uh, abusive relationships. So that's been done away with. There still are restrictions on people who are sponsored that you cannot uh, bring in a new spouse for five years. Uh, and so there are limitations, and the, the government thinks that that is sufficient to prevent any sort of uh, abuse. Um, they've also uh, simplified the process and have now more standard forms. They used to have forms for in Canada and out of Canada, and basically they've got the one set of forms, and they, they both sets of forms basically convey the same set of information. So that is an improvement because people sometimes made mistakes by using the wrong forms. Which, which makes sense, no? It's yeah. Not having right. two different things going. It makes perfect sense. Now, one of the, the big complaints about the previous government is that they changed the age for dependent children to, um, once you hit you know, 19, you no longer qualify as mm -hmm. a dependent, which of course um, a lot of people criticize because a lot of children were still in school, first year university, whatever, they're, they're 19, and you know, is somebody going to leave their you know, 19 year old son or daughter behind because they don't qualify as, as a dependent? Now, the Liberal government has brought in a, a policy that they're extending the stage uh, back to 20, under 22, and that's going to take effect on October 24th, 2017, and this was just recently announced on, on May 3rd. No. When we talk about the, the, the kids, the dependents, are 22 years old, it means they have to be students? No. Well, just if you're under the age of, of 22, you still qualify as, as a dependent. Now, they have a special uh, exemption if somebody's handicapped or you know, they're still dependent on you for, for medical reasons. The old policy was that either once you turn 22, you're no longer qualified, but they also allowed for students who are still in school if you're a full-time student, you still qualify as a dependent. Now, it's interesting that the government has not brought back that, mm. that, that rule or that exemption. So right now, as it sits, if once you've hit past 22, uh, or hit the age of 22, then you're, you're on your own. And that has, uh, I guess, you know, some sort of negative, but at least the, the worst part of it's done, because most people, if they're still first and second year university or college, they're gonna pass the, uh, you know, become 19 years of age. Okay, so it doesn't matter if they are students or not, basically. That's correct. But that may change. I think it would be a good idea for people to put pressure on the government to uh, to br bring back the old rule, because even if, you know, if you're in medical school or law school or graduate school, you're going to definitely be older than 22 before you complete your, your program. And I think Canada yeah. is wasting uh, you know, the, the talent that would be brought in and in fact, these people are still real dependents on their, their parents because unless you've got a scholarship or something, you're independently wealthy, you're still gonna be financially dependent on your parents. And I think the old policy, quite frankly, worked quite well. So, you know, if it ain't broken, don't fix it.